Okay, I like to use a 12 by 12 inch uh, canvas. It's up to you. For some reason, I like squares, man. Whenever I use, whenever I'm producing anything for print, I use inches because pixels are for screen. Points and picas are how type is measured. So I don't know why you would create a piece of art measured in picas or points. I could see pixels if you're going to do something for the web or on the, any other screen, you know, instrument. Inches are for printing in, in America here. When you're using the measurements here in Illustrator, I find it easier for me to use points. So I'll set it in inches and then once I got that, I know what it is, then instead of having to convert it, I'll just leave it like that. I'll switch over to picas and 72 picas uh, I, apparently is 12 inches. So, And then in this exercise, we're going to use RGB resolution. Let's leave it at 300. Now this is going to be a lot of work for your computer. Some parts of it are going to be beginning, some parts will be intermediate, and some parts will be, I'd say, advanced. But I say that anybody can do this if they follow along step by step, and I am uh, presenting each piece in a way that people can understand. So the other thing is, when I produce a piece of art, I experiment a lot, and that's what I would encourage anybody to do who wants to learn how to use Illustrator in a advanced level. So, all right, so the first part of this is we're going to draw the magic cigarette here. And what I want to do is I'm going to, my first layer, I'm going to name it magic cigarette. And I'm not a very good smell. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a very good speller. So, anywho, now uh, you'd have to find a a uh, an image for this. I found one, and um, it is uh, legal and copyright free. So um, you have to do your own search and find one. Be careful if you take images that are copyright protected. Protected, you can get yourself in trouble. Here we go. File. Place. Where is it? There it is. I'm just gonna... Uh, I always drop it from the upper left corner. Click. And there it is. It's not nearly as big as I thought. So, And then I will use this um, tool to enlarge this mofo. Select preview. Click. And how big do I want this man? I'd say Cheech and Chong big. So um, I'm just holding my up arrow. I am in the field over there to scale uniform. And it's getting bigger and bigger. That's what she said. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> there she is. Okay. The magic cigarette. The next step you're going to want to do is go to window and to your navigator. The reason why we're going to use this is going to become very clear in a second. And uh, I wanted this bigger here in the view. There we go. And uh, I'm going to move my canvas right here. I got my layer set up. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is lock that layer and place another layer on top of it. Uh, you can click on this, click, and there it is. And I'll just put uh, cigarette art. Oops. Return. There it is. All right. So this is locked. And what I'm going to do is draw this cigarette. Now, I'm going to use my mesh tool. Click. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, i got to make sure I'm on the right line. I'm going to uh, do this instead. All right, I got that. And as you see here on the navigator, you can see both layers. 
activated, but here's the trick. I'm going to bring in the mesh tool first, and where is it? Where is the damn mesh tool? Oh, there it is. Click. And you know, the thing is, I kind of guess on this, because you can add and remove them. And it depends on how much detail I want. So there and there. And now I'm going to select the colors for each one of those points. And I'm going to zoom up here, uh, holding my command shift key. And I guess for PC, it's a control shift. And I'm going to uh, move this up here and that about there. And, you know, I'm just estimating this. It's not that uh, crucial, to be honest with you. But you want it to look realistic. So, all right, here we go. All right. So I can start with this. This is a good starting point. Now, this is a nice feature about layers. Um, you can turn a layer off and on, or you can uh, view the outline. And because the original cigarette photo is a JPEG, you just see this uh, box with an X through it. What I want to do, basically, is, um, is see the, the photograph and see the outline version of the art sitting on top of it. How do I do that? And that's why we're going to use the navigator. It's really important. So I'm going to hover over the eyeball on the cigarette art layer. I'm going to hold down my command key and click on the eyeball. And what it does, it allows me to turn a specific layer into outline while leaving other layers um, in the standard view. So I have my direct select tool. I'm going to select a point there, zoom up on it and grab my eyedropper and I'm going to click on that. And if you notice up here in the navigator, I'm able to see what's going on with the art on top while at the same time being able to be down here on the main canvas and select, you know, colors. So I had selected my eyedropper and then when I hold my uh, command key, it switches back to direct select, and I can select that, let go of it, and select the color. So click, oops, no, that's a, uh, I guess that's a, uh, not an anchor point, but an arm or a handle. Click, select, click, select. Okay, so you, you can kind of see that I um, kind of bounced around picking these looking at the navigator to see exactly where I was. Um, and then even after, I might go through and um, hold my command key and switch back and forth between the um, direct select and the picker, eyedropper, I mean, uh, eyedropper tool. And click, click, and I, I look at what's going on. So it's easy to miss an anchor or two, uh, but that's okay. Heck with it. Yeah, that's part of the fun. I think it's that one right there I'm trying to... All right, so let's say I am happy with that. Now I'm going to turn the actual uh, image off and go back to a regular view of this. So I held my command key down, clicked on that layer, and here we go. And now when I click on this with my direct select, I can start, you know, kind of forming this. And uh, a lot of these... Uh, Tutorials I'm showing here take some artistic interpretation, and that's part of the advanced use of the software. Back to the direct select, gonna move that down, gonna move this up. And what happens if you look close, you get these kind of little hard edges when you overlap these uh, the grid, and they can work in your favor or they can work against you. In this case, it's gonna work for us. So. Okay, so far so good. I do like these highlights, touches of red at the very edge. So I'm going to go back, turn my uh, original 
image back on. And um, I don't need this navigator anymore. I'm going to turn that out. So like uh, that has one. So like this and go back and, you know, you got to kind of ad lib here. And that is part of the art, man. The art, man. Uh, click. Look at that. I'm making this look like this edge is burning. Oh, there we go. Okay, look. So now I'm going to shut this original JPEG off. So there we go when you look real close. So that's our magic cigarettes. Remember, you can add to this mesh going back to the mesh tool and clicking where you feel you want it. Oops. That was because the fill color down here was what I last used. I'm going to Command or Control Z that. I'm going to go back up here, grab my picker color, and select that for some reason. So if you see the fill color down here is that interesting warm gray. Now I'm going to grab my mesh tool and click and see what happens. There you go. Cool, man. So let's pretend I am completely happy with that. I could spend a lot of time on this, to be honest with you. That's a problem. Uh, when I self-employed, I, I would spend too much time on some of this stuff and not make any money. Uh, but I wasn't drawing magic cigarettes, okay? I was drawing boring shit. Just wanted to let you know, I went in here and added a few more... Um, mesh points here and well, the reason why I did that is if you look closely I think some of these um, these bends I put in here look a little bit more natural um, it looks more like you know wrinkled hippie paper um, so I added a little bit more here's kind of what you could do is I click with my mesh I don't like that color necessarily so I'm gonna go over here and grab this no that didn't work at all that and then um, when you tweak these little um, uh, arms on the oops handles you can get some nice hard edges there there we go see how it makes the paper look like that man all wrinkly I'll, I'll choose a little lighter color maybe nope Yeah, you get the point. All right. So there, that's how it's looking. Now we have to ladder up. I'm going to show you how to do this. Add the burnt ash and the, uh, the flame there or the smoldering, um, you know, add the, uh, the tip of it, the burnt ash and the uh the flame or the hot the hop anyways add the burnt ash in the tip um now if you remember man uh okay so here's how you do that so basically what this is is a stroke that I've applied a zigzag to, <laughs> a zigzag, that's funny, ironic, uh, inner glow, and then I, tw it's called a tweak, and I did it a couple times, and then I overlaid them, you know, so you gotta kind of uh, go with the flow on this thing, man, and then I uh, made this little um, shape here, and I place it on there, and I'll give you the exact formula for this shake, um, color RGB color formula, because uh, uh, we're going to use a uh, a, a blending uh, mode on it. And um, I'm going to click on that, and let's see. Let me go over to window. Where is it? Uh, I always get these confused. I'm jumping back and forth between all these uh, software transparency. There it is, and uh, it's hard light. Um, you know, you could try, wow, that looks even better. Maybe I'll do that instead. Maybe color dodge will work. Okay, so uh, let's do it. Now remember, your layers are really important for this stuff, man, because we're going to work behind the, the magic cigarette layer. Window, uh, layers... 
And uh, I'm going to turn all those off. That's the art I, I created. Oops, except for the magic cigarette earlier. And um, what I'm going to do is um, lock that layer. And uh, I don't know what's on layer three. So I'm going to use layer three there. It's under this cigarette art, uh, the magic cigarette. So first thing I'm going to do is... I am going to uh, make sure that um, I have no fill and pull my uh, stroke forward. And basically, when I go to my swatches, um, I was messing around with these dark grays and stuff, but I just go with this black right here and then make a line. And we're sort of estimating here. So I'm going to make a line about that long. It depends on how long you want the ash to be. All right, so I got that. There we go. And then the thickness makes a difference. So I'm going to set this at, uh, I'm going to start with a, a one point. A lot of these things you have to experiment with on your own. And that's why I'm doing these more advanced tricks and techniques. I have found them by accident because I experiment, play with the software. What's the first thing I do here? I'm going to apply a... I'm going to go to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, and Ziggy Zag. All right, there it is. I'll leave it at just corner, not smooth. I guess I could use smooth or the other. I would experiment. Um, and we want a lot of ridges. That's the that's the deal here. You want a lot of ridges. All right, and I want it tall enough. There we go. About the same width as the tip of the magic cigarette. Maybe a little bit more. All right. So I got that. Okay. Then I'm going to zoom up on this bad boy. And I am going to apply the tweak effect, distort, transform, tweak. And I was playing with this earlier. So. If you have uh, zero tweak on it, that's how it'll start. Modify, select, leave all these three settings checked. Okay, anchor points check, in control check, out control check, um, and then we'll just uh, we'll start messing with this a little bit. Depends on how scribbly you want to make it. See that, and we're gonna make a couple of them and 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 layer them over so each other so. I'm going to keep that like that, okay, and um, I'm going to leave it like that. Now, the next thing you do is effect, uh, stylize, oops, stylize inner glow. Boom. You see that? Now again, I was playing with this earlier, so the opacity I set at 100%, the mode is normal, but the blur, because if you could see the inner glow, is 0p1, which is uh, one point. I have my measurements set as picas. Uh, it's, it, it, with something like this, it's easier to... Um, Adjust. So if I go to point two, you kind of lose some of that glow on the inside of that thing. And that's what you're going to use when you play with the uh, the actual tip of it that looks like it's lit up. We need those areas. Plus, it makes it look more like ashes. All right, I got that. Um, we don't want that. We want the center. So we're getting the glow on the center. Okay. Now, if I thicken my line here, I can still adjust that. Okay. I can still adjust that because I'm going to go to Command or Control Y. There's my original stroke. This is just an effect applied to the stroke. I did not expand it. So we can still modify it. So if I make this a two-point um, stroke, the original stroke two-point, I get that. There is a one point and uh, there's a point seven five. I'm going to play with the one. Again, experiment, man. I'm going to slide this. And as you know, this is behind the layer, excuse me, underneath. 
and um, I'm going to now, I need to tilt it. I don't need to grab my rotation tool. The default setting for the ro rotation tool is the center point. So if I rotate it, see that center point right there? Um, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to just, I have my rotation tool and I'm going to click once right here. And that becomes my rotation point. And that allows me to rotate this like that, man. All right. So there we go. Now um, I can grab this point of the stroke using my direct select and I can crunch it in or out if I want. I'm going to crunch it like that. Then grab my uh, selection tool over here. For those of you who are more advanced, you know the key commands for this. There we go. That's the first one I just did. Look at that. And then I'm going to do another one. Same exact pattern. Black stroke. I'm going to draw a straight line. Just like that. Approximate the length. Because I'm thinking in terms of the size of this, this uh, magic cigarette. And then I'm going to go up, Effect. I'm going to apply my um, Ziggy Zaggy. I'm going to try Smooth this time. I don't know what's going to happen, but who cares? Who cares, man? All right. And then I want it to be taller to kind of match the, you know, again, the, uh, the height of this, uh, the end of this magic cigarette. So there we go. We got that. And then I'm going to effect apply this. I'm going to tweak it. And it comes up because of the settings I used previously on this one. I'm going to, let's see. Let's see what happens. So play with it. I'm going to just leave it like that. Remember, I have all these checked here okay and um i now i did my inner glow effect stylized inner glow and the inner glow is gives me this uh it looks like the ash has been um you know because when you're looking at ash there's lighter parts of it there's darker parts of it and that adds to it so you know if it's the inner glow has too much of a blur it um you lose that in there because these are pretty fine lines overall. So uh, opacity 100%. I messed with the let you know a little bit of less opacity here. What am I doing at 80? I guess that's okay. But I'm going to leave it at 100. I'd encourage you again to experiment. Not with drugs. Experiment with these effects. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. And if I look at my layers here, where is it? Okay, there's this ash right here. This ash is on top of that one. So if I do that, that's what we get. Um, I'm going to compress this a little bit, right? Like that. And um, I can, I'm using my direct select to do this. Okay, there we go. Move it down in here, and I don't like that. Uh, there we go. You know what? I don't think that's tall enough. I want the height. So how do I do that? I have to go back and adjust my zigzag. So how do I do that? Well, if I go up here, effect, and then do zigzag, it's going to... I've already applied one instance to it, so it's going to apply more to this. And if I apply new effect, that's what happens. And that's not really what I want. Uh, cancel. What I want is to just adjust the setting that I currently have. I put a new setting on it. I don't want that, not in this case. How do you do that? I go up to my Windows palette. Excuse me, I go up to Windows and go to the Appearance palette, which is awesome. And since I have this selected, it's showing me all the things I did to it. So there's zigzag click on it and that allows me when I use go through the appearance palette or panel I can adjust what I have right and ridges per segment that looks even better and I'll make it a little taller there we go see that all right 
And I am just visually kind of eyeballing the height of this. So now when I drop this on there, there we go. Cool, man. So that's how I did that. Now, this color, <clears throat> I would suggest using the mix that I'm using for this color. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. And uh, I don't want a stroke on it. And I'm going to mix a color for it. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to find my color mix. Okay. Click twice down here in the film one two and this comes up the color picker and if i move this around you see the formulas that occur but i can also enter a formula and get the color the exact color that i want this formula is r208 green 89 and black red oh, excuse me blue that's rgb red green blue is zero and okay and you see how the swatch changed color there changed color now this is when you play with the layers a little bit there's my rectangle on top of uh both of the pieces of ash i'm gonna uh i'm gonna leave the rectangle on top for this moment here so there it is um and then i'm gonna kind of shape it a little bit Okay, let's say it's like that. Kind of messing around here. And I'm gonna kind of uh, use these little corner adapter things. Uh, dee -dee -dee. All right, and then maybe I'll even tweak it a little bit more, just sort of randomize it a little bit. All right, this is up to you. Okay, so I got that. Here's where we use our blending mode. What did I use last time? It looked cool. Look at that. Okay. Hard light overlay. That looks kind of cool. Um, or I can move it between the two pieces of art I just created. And then I'll just click on this here to select it. And I can play with uh, more settings. There we go. There's hard light. So when you're using transparencies and you move these pieces and layers on top of each other or below each other, uh, you get a lot of effects, man. Play with the software. Take this and mess with it. I bet you'll find things that are just as cool or even cooler than what I just did. So... Um, there's the uh, magic cigarette, man.